So, we're finally here. The first ever episode of Smart ER News. Today, on Smart ER News, we're going to be talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of everything in the smart car world. But first, this. So, thanks very much for joining me. If this is your first visit to my YouTube channel, welcome. Uh, what a way to start it. Um, a quick overview of why this is here and why this exists. So, um, we've had smart cars in the family for about five years now. We've had two, a diesel smart for two coupe and a petrol smart for two coupe. Um, if you have a little look, in the video section that we have on Smart ER YouTube channel, you'll see lots of simple hints and tips for things that I couldn't find on the web to be able to do. Things like oil changes, air filter changes, where do I find this, how do I do that? They were out there, they were either too long or they weren't intricate enough. They didn't break it down enough. So that's why Smart ER came about. My whole raison d'etre was to simply make things easy for everyone else to be able to do the servicing, do the checks, and just get on with enjoying their smart car. So, let's crack on. So a little history, a little overview. So smart was originally uh, the brainchild of uh, the Swatch manufacturers and the collaboration of Mercedes-Benz, with some backing, by the way, of Volkswagen in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, they had a bit of a wobble, there was a bit of a controversy, the design was originally to be an EV vehicle, hence the high stance and the, um, the high floor within the vehicle. So with the expense then of what batteries were and the complications, the technology didn't exist then, they decided to uh, pop a little engine in the back of the car and uh, hey presto, it was born. Now, there are three incarnations, three main incarnations of the Smart for two, um, and we've got the Smart Roadster as well, which can be um, a sort of a glass hatchback uh, Roadster, but also then with a, with a booted uh, Roadster as well. And they have the ability then to roll back the Targa roof and take out the little, uh, the, the top pillars. So it really does look like a, a 911 Targa from the, the late 70s, early 80s. Really nice design. And then you have the Smart for Four. Um, I don't really know much about it. The clue's in the name. So a Smart for Two means it's for two people. And a Smart for Four means it's for four people. Simple. So in the, uh, the noughties, then they started to be able to design more capable engineering methods of developing batteries to allow the smarts orig origin to become viable. And electric vehicles are now becoming very popular, very fashionable, very trendy. And uh, the smart EV, which is the latest version of the new smart for two, is pretty damn good and very, very usable. So, with a smart car, um, a decent backing of a bigger automotive company, a great design company, it took off and it became very fashionable and it quickly took off around the world. Some people were a little, I think, intimidated, which is ironic because it's only a small car, by the potential this vehicle had. I think it scared some manufacturers because although it wasn't cheap for a small car, it was going to be cheaper and it was gonna be more accessible. And the petrol companies would have to actually take note and start making vehicles more efficient and maybe even start worrying a bit more about this electric car phenomenon. What I've noticed, and it's only relatively, relatively lately, is when I joined Instagram to try and help promote the channel, there's quite a few of amazing, really dedicated smart clubs out there. Um, I, I've seen clubs in Russia, China, Indonesia, um, in the States, 
obviously large country. Um, there's a dedicated one in France. There's a couple in the UK and one of them is called, I believe it's Invictus and they are amazing. Um, I'll put some descriptions and some links and contacts in the description below so that you can click on those. And if you've got a smart car or you wanna find out more, um, you can do so and get in touch with those guys. So getting back to the new Smart for Two EV. Now, again, I'll put a link in the description below to a lot more detailed uh, videos in this particular vehicle. But what I really love about this, I really love about it, features such as the autonomous driving, which is the which is the preserve of the high high end manufacturers, um, and also the real technology kickstarters like Tesla. Um, it's now coming to Smart for Two. Smart say that they have um, EVs, Smart for Two EVs already able to do autonomous driving, and it's going to be a simple upgrade to be able to allow your vehicle to do that. Whether that comes to fruition or not, we'll see. But what I do love about it is the connected living. So again, if you haven't done much research on this, it's the simple things that I like. So for example, before you get into your vehicle, you're leaving your home, you can turn on the preheaters and warm up your vehicle. You can uh, de-ice the screen. Then you can preset the sat-nav where you want to go if it's gonna be somewhere new. It's gonna be amazing. But then built into that, then you'll be able to link your social media, if that's your bag, into your locations where you're going to be going. Um, you'll be able to track and monitor. You can do all these things now, all segmented, but this will all be built in under one umbrella again with autonomous driving built in. And I think that's mega exciting. Um, I really can't wait to give it a try. I'm really trying hard to hold back from buying a new Smart for Two Coupe, not because it's dramatically more expensive than just getting onto a 451, which is the version that I've got now, but I really wanna see where the tech is going because I think there's a lot of miles in this to go, if you forgive the pun. Okay, so, we're on to the final part of the show now, and I'm going to try a bit of fun every week at the end. We look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly of the smart car world. So we're going to look at some modifications. So the first one, I'm just going to have a little look, just to remind me, um, it's from a company called Sascha Goethe Meyer. It's a German tuning company. Um, I'll try and get the photo up here. Now, one man's love is another man's poison, and I love this. It's really neat six axles and a trailer. And I remember, I think they call it the Smart Move, which I think is quite clever. But again, I'll put all the links to all the photographs and any material to these vehicles that we look at in a moment in the description below. This I really love. Is it practical? No. Is it fun? Yes. Is the payload gonna carry a lot? No, it's not but I love the versatility of it, I love the fun of it, and that keeps in ethos with everything smart. The smart cars, people look at them and smile, some point and laugh, but hey, what do they know? But I tell you what, when I've got them in my car and they've never had a go in one, they smile, they forget about the full length glass route and the little three cylinder engine in the back, oh my God, and then when it takes off, it is nippy. All right, the gearbox isn't the best, but my God, they love it. So I love that, so, so well done. Sasha Goethe is Mayor. I think that's awesome. So the next one we're going to look at up here. Now this one I found uh, a couple of days ago. It's um, it's a bit of a. It's from 2016 and it's an elongated smart car into a small extended limousine. There's some amazing features in here, which I think any limo should have. I I think that's that's pretty neat. So um, I think I'm going to call it the ugly because it's not bad, but I do think it is ugly. It just it it, it doesn't rub me the right way. I don't know if that's the right phrase, but it, um, some cracking features in there, but it just looks wrong. It's too long. It's nothing to do with smart. Um, what do you think? Put it in the comments below. Let me know. What do I know? And then the final one. <sighs> okay. I guess it's a bit of fun, but I think it looks bad. It looks awful. It's just, tacked on with some green plastic felt. Um, no imagination really whatsoever. And what does it do for the resale value? <laughs> Would you buy one? <laughs> really? Anyway, so that's the good, the bad and the ugly. Um, I'm sorry if I've uh, not made this flow as 
well as it could do, but over time this will get a bit more slick. Um, so that's it for today. That's the very first episode of Smart ER News. Um, I've got a new video coming up very shortly, another how-to video. Um, make sure you subscribe, make sure you click the bell just to make sure that you get all the notifications of the new videos of this, the Smart ER News but also of the new maintenance and the how-to videos. So the new video coming up is of, um, there's been a few requests that I've mentioned historically. If you've got a problem with your vehicle electronic wise to get yourself a code reader. So I'm gonna, I've ordered an auto, uh, an auto code reader. It should be here tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna try and uh, do an unboxing. It won't take long. And then we'll have a little look. Uh, once I become familiar with this particular model, I'll walk you guys through it. And this auto reader it was something like 14 pounds. It'll get out a lot of things. And if you do your own servicing, you'll be able to reset your service indicator as well. You'll be able to check if there's anything that needs to be put right. So um, without further ado, I want to thank you ever so much for your attention. Um, please, it does help me. I'm on 950 subscribers. Uh, and since YouTube has pulled the plug on, um, on the monetization for anything less than 1,000 subscribers and so much viewing time, it really does mean a lot, so please subscribe. If you've got any requests, any questions, if you want to have a feature on the, the news, um, please contact me. Um, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, um, I'm on Instagram as well. All the details will be in the description below. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day and uh, stay smart.